Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024. Here we are in the Aria in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and co-analyst, Dave Vellante. We are joined by Jennifer Johnson. She is the Chief Marketing Officer here at CrowdStrike. JJ, thanks yes. so much for coming back to theCUBE. Well, thanks for being back, and thanks for having me back. It's well, great to be here. Before the cameras were rolling, we were talking about what, an, what a great event this is, and this is yeah. the biggest and best one yet. Yeah. Um, what, I mean, what does Falcon mean to CrowdStrike? I mean, obviously it's an annual thing, you do it every year, but what does it mean to the company and the culture of the company? You know, um, we talk a lot about our mission of stopping breaches, and we have this ethos, one team, one fight. We talk about it a lot, because I think a lot of companies have they have taglines, they have statements, and you know, sometimes people write it, but it's not really internalized. You, know, you, you might you know, walk through the halls of your office and you see it like, written on the wall, it's one of your company values, and, but we, we really live it. I mean, when we write emails, we, we use OTOF, one team, one fight. I mean, and we, so we talk, we're very mission driven, and we very much are about one team, and we're all in this fight of stopping breaches together. And it starts with, with crowd strikers, but it can't end with crowd strikers. And that's really what Falcon is about, is it's about bringing everyone together, because we, know, we all know more than ever we're all interconnected, as George was talking about in his keynote yesterday. The world is interconnected, we're all interconnected, and we win together and we are stronger together. And that's, Falcon is really about that, bringing everyone together. Customers, partners, the everyone. ecosystem. Analysts, yeah. everyone, yeah. Oh, that's right, you guys have an analyst program here. And so, you got a nice cadence going, you got Falcon, yeah. but you got a big presence at reInvent mm -hmm. every year, and then you go into RSA, then you do Black Hat, which is like a warm up for, for Falcon, <laughs> and then it starts all over again, right? So, yep. but this is the biggest one ever. Yep. Um, you're kind of going to outgrow the Aria soon. We, well, we have. So, it, we signed the Aria, as people who do events know, you have to sign yeah. it, you know, usually multiple years in advance. So we signed the Aria for this year two years ago. I don't, I might have just, I don't even know if I was here as CMO yet when we signed the Aria. I've been here for two years now. And we thought, we were about 2,000 people two years ago. So we thought, okay, well, you know, we'll grow at a nice clip, but the, the capacity here is 6,000 people. That's why we have 6,000 people. It's not because that's yeah. all we got. It was because we actually physically couldn't, <laughs> hold more people in this space than 6,000 people. So uh, we probably could have had another 1,000 or 1,500. So next year, we unfortunately, this is a great venue, but we will have to go somewhere else. Uh, we already know our venue. I don't think we've officially announced it yet. So, but we will be at another, here, we'll be at another <laughs> Las Vegas venue okay. uh, next year. Uh, you'll probably hear it before the end of this week. <laughs> so what does it take to put on an event of this magnitude? I mean, as you said, people who plan events know, but yeah. for those of us who don't, who, who yeah. can only just fathom what it is to, to, to make sure that everything goes seamlessly, any yeah. surprise guests are actual surprises and that comes yeah. off yeah. seamlessly too. The, the thing about an event like this is the events team really is the quarterback of the entire event, but putting on an event of this magnitude takes the, really the entire company and our, and our partner in an ecosystem community, but if I think about CrowdStrikers, we have so many different programs going on, and the larger we get, the more scale and the more programs we'll have to have. If you think about it, our partner conference, on our partner summit on Monday, had almost a thousand people there. Well, for a lot of companies, that's the size of their user conference. So if you think about all of these events within our event, we probably have 10 to 12 conferences within the conference. So we, you really have to get in that mindset of thinking about it in those terms. And I think we're really excited to even, I mean, this year's been fantastic. We're already thinking, we're getting all these ideas for next year already, and we have big goals for next year. You know, hopefully you're going to start to see, uh, you know, us hit 10,000 maybe even next year. So that even brings a whole new level of scale, and that's exciting for us because that means we can offer that many more, you know, programs and educational opportunities and opportunities for our partners to come here and engage and. You know, it's it's funny. It, 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 not nothing against the other security conferences out there, <laughs> but we've heard for a couple of years now from our partners that they find the quality of attendees and conversations here more valuable than maybe some of the other larger, more established cybersecurity conferences. 
Uh, this is the first year that we've actually heard a couple of partners already actually say that they're pulling out of some of these other conferences to go all in with us and some of our other ecosystem partners like AWS and Zscaler. So oh. it's interesting, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well I think I'm an observer of events as you can imagine, been doing this for a long time and yeah. I liken the trajectory you're on to ServiceNow, you and I have mm, talked about yeah. this. The ecosystem three years ago was very similar to the early service nowadays, and yep. at the time we said, this, this feels like it's ready to explode. We had Dreamforce this week, the Cube was there. That's an enormous show. Yep. Service now is now huge. I think no question you'll be, you're going to blow through 10,000. You're going to be the next great software company. You know, it takes time, you know, yep. and a lot, of, a lot of work. I want to ask you, so you've been on two years now, right? Yes. Okay, so I watched a video prepping for this show and this whole idea of category design mm -hmm. came up, and you said something that was really interesting. At the early formation of a company, you need positioning mm -hmm. uh, chops, and then you got to have operational skills, get all the metrics, mm -hmm. and do all the demand gen stuff. And then, beyond that, you got to sort of recreate, and it's the category design. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, because I think about the progression of CrowdStrike, you came in right when they really had to really rethink, mm -hmm. oh, it's the endpoint security company. Mm -hmm. No, so, I wonder if you could take us through that journey and where, yeah. how you put your fingerprints on that category design. Well, it's, it's, it's a great question, and people will ask a lot, what category is CrowdStrike in? I said, well, we're in, we're in probably 12 categories, <laughs> right? Endpoint security and EDR is, is the original category that CrowdStrike pioneered, but now we're in cloud security. That's an entire category in and of itself. Right. We're in exposure management. Now we're in IT automation. Uh, next identity. gen SIM, identity. Yeah. So you start to put it all together, and now all of a sudden, we're actually building multiple categories underneath this umbrella of being the AI native cybersecurity platform. So it's exciting and it's complex and it's not a single category. So if you think about you know, our, our competitors in cloud security are different than our competitors in next gen SIM. So that makes it fun. You know, we're fighting a battle on multiple fronts. So as a, as a CMO, I don't have the marketing gene as Rebecca knows. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you approach that in thinking about, do you, do you try to not get put into a category bucket? Do you try to create a new category? Are you like a, like a hyperscaler, not that you're a hyperscaler, but yeah. you know how they're in everything as well. So yeah. how do you think about that as a marketer? Well, first and foremost, everything we do starts with the platform, and that's also true for our marketing and our storytelling and our category creation, is we want to be that single definitive platform, right? There's always going to be multiple platforms in cybersecurity. We're not going to be the only platform, but we cover a broad range of cybersecurity categories, so everything really starts with kind of having that one place that one workflow where the SOC analysts, the cloud security teams, now the IT uh, teams can actually go and do all their work. So there's kind of, that is really the, the guiding force along everything. And then within that, there's very specific use cases and problems that different teams need to solve. Cloud security being a great example of that, and the category that Gartner's coined is called CNAP, Cloud Native Application Protection Platforms. And that's a collection of, I mean, you talk about acronym soup. That's CSPM and CWP and KIM and ASPM and DSPM, all these things together equal CNAP. Uh, but CNAP in and of itself, we'll call it cloud security, that is a collection of all the categories and subcategories that I just talked about, and that has a very discrete a set of companies out there. So, you know, you have to think about everything comes back to our vision of rolling up to the platform. But we're, the way I think about it is, we're building, we're building all of those subcategories. So we have a team that thinks, that wakes up every day thinking about how are we going to go build market awareness, build drive demand, and prove our market leadership in CNAP because we have to be focused there because that's a discrete problem that we're solving for a discrete and a, a set of people, but at the end of the day, the real magic is when you can bring it all together. So we talked about, Mike talked about cross-domain attacks today. It's a great example of this. So having one place where you can do everything cloud security is valuable, but now you start thinking about stopping a breach. Well, they're stealing a credential, and then they're exploiting cloud, and they're getting into an endpoint and they're moving laterally. Well, how do you stop a breach when it's across all of those identity, cloud, and endpoint? having a single platform that can bring all of that together. So that's really where the magic happens for us that we can then start to say, that's great that you have cloud visibility, but now we can bring together identity, visibility, cloud visibility, endpoint visibility, and we can really help you stop a breach in a way that really no one else can. The other interesting thing, and again, I, I presume it's by design, maybe not, I, I'd love to pick your brain on this, the marketing brain. 
I'm, I'm watching this whole time this screen of all the, the villains. <laughs> and I've seen you know, famous Kalima, Kalima. Uh, Nemesis, Kitten, uh, Scattered, Scattered Spider. Spider. And so you guys are like the superhero, but you don't market the superhero no. aspect of that, but you kind of are with the, with the ecosystem. But that's sort of what you do. There's bad guys and there's good guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you every, guys are on the right side. <laughs> every story, every story right? is a tale of good versus evil. Bad versus good, there's a hero, right? And there's a protagonist, an antagonist, there's a good guy, there's a bad guy or girl, or girl. and that's really what every, as, as the formation of every story, and that's what we are as marketers, we're storytellers. And if you think about the, the evolution of, or the inception of bringing adversary storytelling, it was never, and it's still, it's never a, a we're not glorifying the adversary. Right. We're not trying to make them a superhero. We're, we're actually bringing the story of the adversary and their behavior to educate the market in a way that people can relate to. Really, that's what marketing is about, is it's simplifying it down and telling it in a relatable way. And I think that's the, when you really understand that's what the adversary storytelling has done, is allowed us to be able to tell these stories and help educate the market. And then, about a year ago, our Super Bowl ad last year, we, t we made a, a conscious decision that we didn't want people to think that the adversaries were being glorified and becoming, looking like superheroes. So we actually redesigned all of them. Um, and fun fact, we worked with, uh, we worked with the, the same visual effects agency in our Super Bowl ad last year that, you, that Marvel Comics uses. Uh, okay. And so we told them we want them to look sinister, evil, right? Feeble, Scary. even. Scary. Yeah. And so that, the evolution and the shift, if you look at our adversaries over time, are taking much more of that approach. Because we're cognizant of that too. We don't want, that, we don't want to glorify them. But we do want to bring awareness to it because in all seriousness, that's what's going to help the industry get better is if people are aware. So uh, here we are at Falcon. There are so many incredible sessions and trainings and, and keynote talks. Yeah. What are some of your personal favorite oh, favorite highlights? There are so many. I mean, George uh, George with his special guest yesterday, Satya, was a was a true a true uh, surprise. And you kept that under wraps. Well it's, done. Thank you. It was at it first was, we thought okay, j another Jensen appearance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so and then wow, wait a minute, that was great. I mean, I think it's really important to show that the industry does need to work together, mm -hmm. and even though we are competitors, we come together when it's most important, which is helping our joint customers and partners in the ecosystem be stronger. And so I, th I think that was an amazing moment yesterday, and um, hopefully we'll see a lot more of that across the industry, uh, that level of, of collaboration. Um, we have, there's so many things here going on this week. Uh, we had, a, had our uh, executive track, Falcon One, um, that's been, it's ongoing, right, uh, still going on. We've had about 200 CXOs um, from you know, some of our largest customers all over every industry, all over the globe that are here. And so it's been a week of, you know, I think one of the values is getting, just getting them in a room and being able to network and learn from each other and talk to our executives on a more, probably in, more intimate level and uh, being able to talk to other customers. Today they did a, a lunch with a SOC transformation panel, which was two of our uh, Biogen and MGM CISOs were, were speaking at that. So they're able to, to learn and, and network and understand best practices from each other and from us in a, in a more just intimate setting. So that's kind of been one of my, my highlights. Um, and the adversary underground, of course, like that's always a Great. hit. And if you, there, we have a podcast, so if you haven't subscribed to the adversary underground podcast, please do because Adam Myers and uh, Christian Rodriguez, who who lead uh, co-host that podcast, they have some amazing stories. I'll just tell you that you went to the adversary so underground yesterday. So last night yesterday. they had adversary underground, and they had about I would say about 300 people there. It was all in the vault. And they basically did a podcast yeah. right there. It was an extended podcast, like most are. It was, a, it was a long form, go deep, audience questions. It was really phenomenal. So I, I, I subscribed after last night. I'm like, I got to follow this. Yes. It was really top quality yes. and super interesting. Extraordinarily like, interesting. Leading edge uh, work to check that out for sure. And it just shows you, I mean, that Mike's, Mike's, one of his big themes today in, his, in Mike Santonis' mm -hmm. keynote was about bringing human and technology expertise together, right? And we have amazing technology, but the human expertise is an equal part of the equation because adversaries are human beings at the end of the day. And so, I mean, Adam made a great point today and his part of the, the keynote is fighting an adversary, you need a human on the other side because we have the context. We can understand it in a way that the technology can't 
and we feed all that human intelligence then back into the technology, so it creates this multiplier, and it's making the technology smarter, which is making the humans smarter. So, I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty amazing, and, and Adam Myers, who, who runs the Adversary Universe podcast, is the leader of our counter-adversary operations team, and I mean, the work that they do is, uh, is, is very important work, but uh, it's mind-blowing, uh, really, it is. It's, and it's extraordinarily interesting. So I plug all of your, your, uh, your readers and watchers out here to uh, subscribe to the Adversary Universe podcast. Must, must listen. Yes. yes, Michael called it the irreplaceable human element, which yes. I thought was pretty powerful. Yes. Uh, automate responses, we can do that, but humans provide the context, just like mm -hmm. you said. I mean, I thought that was, that was right on. Everybody thinks, okay, AI is going to just solve all the problems. We know. We need humans in the loop. The, we definitely our, do. Our own use as writers. Yes. We use AI and go, eh, no, that's not, that's <laughs> yeah. not going to fly. It can yeah. help you, right? Yeah, yeah, it can definitely. augment it, but it's not, it's not going to replace. Right. No. Yeah. Exactly. Well, JJ, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having theCUBE Thank here. you for having we, me. We're having yeah. a blast. Thank you for being here. Yeah, our pleasure. All right. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Falcon 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.